Reading with your kids. Hey, 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 so great to see you. Come on in. Hi, my name is Jed Lee, and this is the Reading with Your Kids podcast, a spooky edition of the Reading with Your Kids podcast. Well, it's not really all that spooky. But we have one of the spooky middle grade authors on, our friend Samantha M. Clark. You met her briefly during that spectacular Christmas special that we had with the spooky middle grade authors. Samantha is back to tell us about her fantastic book, The Boy, The Boat, and The Beast. Before Samantha joins us, I would love to take just a moment to tell you about my very first published book. It's called The Great Maritini. The Great Maritini tells the story of Sam, a wonderful and clumsy magician. He's really cool. He's really clumsy. He makes lots of mistakes, and kids love it. It's hilarious. But one of the great things that you're going to love about Sam is that he never gives up on himself. And because of that grit and resiliency, he is able to learn how to perform amazing transformations on stage. But it's on a journey from one stage to another that Sam discovers that the greatest transformation of all is the transforming feelings of caring into action to help another human being. Now, The Great Maritini has been called one of the top seven books to teach us kids kindness by childrenspublishing.com. It's also received Story Monsters approval. Most of all, I hope it receives your family's approval and that you will consider adding it to your family library. Now, you can experience a great Maritini in a number of different ways. You can read it for free via Kindle Unlimited. That's the e-edition. You can also order the e-book at Amazon. You can also order a print edition at Amazon. And you can order a giant autographed bilingual English-Spanish edition of the book exclusively at our website, greatmaritini.com. Joining us on the line right now from Austin in Texas. And I hear Austin is like this really, really funky town. I have to get down there someday. She's the author of a wonderful middle grade book called The Boy, The Boat, and The Beast. Please welcome to the show, Samantha M. Clark. Samantha, how are you? I'm great. Thank you so much for having me. And Austin is definitely a very cool place to be. So I definitely think that you should come down here and visit. Very soon. Yeah, yeah. My daughter is in the music business, and you know we've we've traveled down to Nashville, and and all we hear is, oh, you got to check out Austin. Austin's like the happening yes. place. And you know, my first reaction is, well, I don't like country music, and they go, no, we're talking about Austin. No. Yes, no, no, no. It's it's much. It's not Nashville is country music. Austin is not. Yeah, yeah. And it's the live music capital of the at least the nation. That's what they say at least. Yeah, yep. That's what I hear. Lots of really cool, funky art and artisans, and yeah. and also a really cool, funky author who wrote the boy, the boat, and the beast. Tell us a little bit about your novel. It's, it's, um, well, it, it was published by Simon and Schuster on June 26th this year. So, um, it's, it's still really new. It's already gone into its second printing, which is very exciting. And, um, it's about a boy who wakes up on a beach. He doesn't know who he is, where he is, or how he got there. Mm. All he knows is that every time he tries to leave, everything turns scary. The birds get big and bloated and, the, the waves try to get him. The, the 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 trees seem like they're coming out to get him, and he knows that there's a beast that's trying to that's in the the woods trying to find him as well, facing him as well. Um, he finally he sees a. He also has a voice in his head that he's not good enough. He's going to fail no matter what. Um, that he's a coward. Um, so he he finally sees a light that shines over the trees, and he thinks, well, maybe this is his parents trying to find him. So he has to gather up his courage and go on a journey to to not only find his way home, but find home, uncover the mystery of what has happened to him. And along the way, he discovers that the only way he's going to get home is if he faces his biggest fears. Mm, 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 mm. So it's it's a book about, um, it's, it's a journey book, but it's also a book about fears, about insecurities. It's about, I kind of liken it to, 
that 10 year old who is um, that scared 10 year old who I think is actually in everybody, no matter what age you are. You know, I, I think one of the things that we hear this, uh, one of the images that, that I think a lot of people have is of this carefree childhood. And, oh, I wish I could go back to being a child. It was so cool. We didn't have to, you don't have to work. You just had yeah. fun. You played with your friends. And in reality, the, the reality is much more like your character experiences, you know. Yes. Ten-year-olds yes, are filled with insecurities. Yes, absolutely. I think kids are, are, I mean, they're trying to find themselves. They have no real agency for themselves. They, they, um, they owe everything to other people. They can't, you know, they're limited in what decisions they, they can make. They're limited in where they can live. They can't just make the decision to up and move to a different state if they want to or move to a different house if it's not safe where they are. Um, and they're also very, um, responsive to the things that people tell them Mm -hmm. and that's another another part that comes into my book without giving away too many spoilers that's something that kind of comes into the book as well how we are excuse me how we are influenced by the things the words that other people tell us as well as the words that we tell ourselves Mm -hmm. um i after i had written the book once once the book was when we were getting ready for publication. I, um, I, I was a journalist before I started writing novels, and I had done a story years ago when I was working for the Tampa Tribune about um, art therapy and how it had helped these uh, children who went through the war in Serbia. And it, it was amazing, the, the stories that they, that they had and the art that they had done um, through their therapy was, was absolutely amazing and so fascinating. So I've always been fascinated by art therapy. So with this book, because it's about fear, I wanted to kind of create something that parents and teachers, librarians could use that could kind of maybe help kids, you know, who are scared um, as well as reading the book. So um, I contacted a friend of mine, Kirsten Cappy, who's an amazing um, children's book marketer, and she put me in touch. I told her about the idea that I had and she loved it. And she put me in touch with an an author friend of hers, who's also a child psychologist called Bonnie um, Thomas. And um, Bonnie read the book and loved the idea of doing an art therapy project based on the, on the book. Um, But she also said that um, she actually wanted to use it for her clinical clients as well for trauma clients so we created two. We ended up creating two art therapy projects for the book. Um, but all this to say that one of the exercises in these art therapy projects is um, to think of the words that um, you tell yourself and, you know, kind of rework those words. So tell different stories. When I'm doing um, school visits, the, one of the things that the boy does to help himself to build him, his own courage in the book is he tells himself once upon a time stories. So, for example, when, you know, he has to be brave, he'll think, you know, he'll tell himself a story like, you know, once upon a time there was a boy who killed all the monsters in the land or something like something along those lines. And um, so one of the things that I do when I do school visits, and this is also like in the art therapy project too, is to write your, is to have, tell kids that they can write their own once upon a time stories. So they can change the stories that they, that we tell ourselves. So often we get, we, you know, I think most of us have an inner bully that's telling us, you know, you're a coward, you're not good enough, you're going to fail just like the boy does. But by changing those stories, and it's so easy to believe that in a bully, and then it's so easy to spiral from that into just despair and not, you know, and giving up. But if we can somehow change the words that we use for, you know, to ourselves and the words that we use to other people as well, then hopefully that can start to build up courage and build up, you know, empathy and kindness more, you know, Mm -hmm. as well. It's interesting. I was just having a conversation with an author last week and we both kind of had that same revelation at the same time is that sometimes we can be our own worst bully, our own biggest bully. 
you know, the things that we tell ourselves. And, and before I started doing the podcast, before I started doing my educational magic shows, I was in human services and dealing with kids, at risk kids. And it's amazing some of the things that they say about themselves. Yeah. You know, really negative things, you know, I, and, and one of my responses to them used, was, if I ever heard anybody say that to you, I would be up in their face so fast yeah. defending you and letting you know that they can't talk to you like that. But you're talking to yourself like that. Yeah, yeah. It's really sad. Um, but I, but we do it all the time. I mean, I, I did it as a child. Mm-hmm. And... Um, and I still do it. I still have those insecurities. I'm, I've got tools that can help me to, you know, push them away, push them aside to believe in myself a lot more now. But I still do that. And I know a lot of adults who still, who still do too. Um, when I, when I talk about this in school visits and I tell them that I have that, that I had it, you know, when I was a kid and that I still have it. And that's one of the reasons why I never thought that this book I never thought that I could be an author or that this book would ever get published. And now here it is. I see a lot of them, you know, there's like, they they get very quiet and I see a lot of them like, you know, staring and nodding and their focus is on that. And I know that they're thinking, yes, that's right. I have that same thing. And I've had kids coming up to me after school visits and saying, you know, how do you deal with that? And I have that too. And it, it is, it's, it's hard enough. Um, being a kid when you have to do what other people tell you, you have to learn everything from outside. And that in itself is hard and is hard to give you that confidence to think that you can think for yourself. You can make your own choices. You can make the right choice because if other people are always telling you what you should think, what you should do, it's hard to think that you can do the right thing. Mm-hmm. You know, you have to kind of step and fall sometimes. Yeah. Um, so, 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 so all of that, it it does, it lends itself to kids not thinking that they can, can be, Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Well, let's, let's imagine, put our thinking caps on our imagination caps on and (laughs) you've written the boy, the boat and the beast. And there's your they're obviously second printing. There are families that are adding this to their family library. Knowing that these kids, that kids have all these, these issues and self doubts and voices telling them, what would be the best way that you can imagine that a parent can, can use your book, co-reading this book with their kids to kind of empower kids to help them come to the realization that they, that that they do have the ability to make choices and that uh, we recognize that you're going to make mistakes as you go along, but that's okay because I'm going to be here to help you. Right. Yes. That's the whole point. That's exactly it. It's that, you know, we as adults, we're here to help, you know, um, not to, I mean, we have to guide and, and everything, but also we're the foundation much more than, than, um, the push, I suppose, for want of a better word. Um, so how how could parents help kids? I think, I, I mean, I'm hoping that the, the story itself will, you know, kids, I, I, kids are amazingly intuitive when it comes to reading stories. Um, you, you don't have to spell out things to kids. They they will pick up on so much. The smallest thing in a, in a thread of a story, they will pick up on it. Um, I think actually... Writing for kids is is hard because they they have um, they they will call you out on anything if if they think that it doesn't sound uh, realistic or um, believable in any way. So so I don't feel like this book has a moral mm-hmm. view or message, so to speak. But through reading the boy's journey, I think that. The kids can kind of intuit the um, the tools that he uses and use them for themselves. One of the things that I do, in fact, is they um, when the boy wakes up on the beach, all he has is his clothes and he has a piece of fabric in his pocket. 
And he uses that from time to time to comfort him. It's very soft. And um, I so when I went again, when the book was coming out, I decided that I wanted to make up little pieces of fabric that had the, the book title on it. But it also says make your own courage, which is a, a line from the book, make your own courage, because and I I believe in in that a lot, because, again, there's only, you know, even if you can have all of these, you can have like 10 people. I, I've seen a lot of TED Talks about this. A lot of there's a lot of scientific proof about this. You can have 10 people tell you amazing things about you. And then you can have one person say one negative thing. And we're going to focus on that one negative thing. So we can't just um, say that we're going to get our courage from other people telling us good things about ourselves. We have to have it within us as well. Mm -hmm. We have to make that own courage. We have to find those good things. We have to listen to the good, let go of the bad. Mm -hmm. Um, So, so anyway, so I made up these, these little, these little, uh, I call them comfort squares. I've been handing them out to librarians at the Texas library association at the um, American library association conference. And um, I was just at the national council of teachers in English um, conference um, handing them out to, and I hand them out at, I'm doing book signings and everything. They're really soft and I really love them. And, and people have really responded to them and said that they really love them too. But so after I had decided to do this, when I was working with Bonnie, I actually discovered that this is something that, um, psychologists do. And there's, there's one, there's one of the activities in the art therapy Cont- um, uh, art project, the Make Your Own Courage Art Therapy project is it's a you can it's it's basically how to make your own little um, comfort package and and she goes into details of how you know how you can you know work with kids to do this like for example you can get an Altoids box or a Matchbox you can cover it you can decorate it yourself you can just find you can put in there things like a compass where or a pebble or, you know, something that is, is comforting to you. You can collect little things that are comforting to you. Um, so, so it was funny that it was interesting that I was already, you know, I was kind of already along those lines, which, which, which was great. So I think for parents, they can, they can do things like this. And I also, if, you know, anyone who's bought the book, please email me on my website. Let me know. I'd be happy if you didn't, if you didn't buy it at a signing and you didn't get a comfort square and you'd like one, please email me and let me know. I'll be happy to mail you one. And, um, uh, but there's also lots of other exercises in that art therapy project. So I think parents can go through that. And there's two art therapy projects. There's one for clinicians and then there's, um, one for, um, um, parents, librarians, you mm-hmm. know, there's a caregiver version, which mm-hmm. you don't need a psychology degree to, you know, to, to work with. Right, right. right. I think that's a great way of um, working with kids on it. You know, you don't actually, it, it, it has, it references the book, but I don't think you actually have to read the book to get, to understand the exercises. I think it helps and I think the book helps, but you can do the exercises in the art therapy project, I think, without reading the book mm-hmm. and, um, and still get a lot out of them. And I think they'll help. Well, I think one of the beautiful things about using the book is that we, we talk a lot on the podcast uh, about how books are actually kind of keys that allow us to kind of open up the doors and get into some conversations that kids might not want to get into or, well, parents might not want to get into exactly. <laughs> without, you know, having this. Oh, we're not talking about you. We're talking about the character in the book. <laughs> exactly. Yes. And that's one of the things that Bonnie, you know, did with the, um, I keep talking about the art therapy project, but it's kind of so perfect for this, but that's one of the things that she did because she, she, and one of the reasons why she wanted to use it with her clients, because through it, she said that you, you know, you can, you can talk about, you know, in it, there's like lines that say, you know, the boy went through this kind of trauma you know, have, have you ever been through any kind of trauma? Can you think of, you know, times when you were really scared? And then it, it can lead to discussions. So the ones, the art project 
that she um, set up, which is designed toward um, professionals, is really designed to help kids bring out those kind of discussions so that you are doing it in a in a professional um standpoint with with professionals who will know how to answer those questions and how to help Mm -hmm. the child Mm -hmm. from there um but from the caregiver um art therapy project with those there it's a little bit lighter it still has those parts of it you know like the boy had a piece of fabric in his pocket what kind of things do you use to comfort yourself and it talks about the once upon time stories and it also gets kids to draw things like you know if you had um uh, if you had an in a bully what would it look like what what you know draw the things or it it says like draw you know write the things that it it would tell you mm-hmm. around yeah. around the drawing then cross them out and write positive things instead and then another one in the parent uh, the caregiver one is you know imagine that you have an inner friend instead of an inner bully what would the inner friend look like what would they tell you so it's been it's been a lot of fun to work with but i agree with you completely because the the books are the keys because we we learn through um through those characters i'm i'm also a, a part of another group um called the spooky middle grade um spookymiddlegrade.com and i think we've been talking as some others have been talking to you about that and um one of the things that we've been talking about a lot we've been doing these free group Skype visits with schools and one of the things that we've been talking about a lot is that spooky books are you know fantastic any time of the year because one of the the great things that they do and this I think works with any type of book is that you can um through the characters you can explore your own feelings you can also extend your own boundaries i've had there've been you know parents and teachers you know various adults who've told me that they've given my book to kids who have become a little too afraid of p- parts of the book so they've put it down but then they still wanted to find out what happened so they picked it up later when they had more courage and then they finished it and um and that's amazing and that's the wonderful thing about about books because you can close the book when you're scared you can put it away but then you can pick it up again when you when you've made a little bit more courage um courage anything like that it's like a muscle you have to you use it mm-hmm. and every time you use it, it it expands that boundary it strengthens just a little bit more mm-hmm. and through um books like um the boys about and the beast and the other books on um you know the the spooky middle grade.com um authors it let those allow kids to kind of explore their fears what they are what they're afraid of in a safe place because they can always close that book but it also allows them to to push a little bit further into their fears and to gain um tools about how to use you know how to how to work through their fears mm-hmm. In a very safe way yeah. with books. Absolutely. And if there's any parent out there thinking, oh, uh, my kids, my kids fine. They don't need any kind of art therapy. They, and I'm not a psychologist. I don't, you know, I don't want to get in this touchy feely stuff. Forget about, forget about that. Even if that's true, although it's not true. Um, <laughs> even if it, even if it is true, sitting down and talking, doing these exercises and talking to your kids about the characters and what do you think they're feeling and how would you do This is a wonderful way for you to help your kids learn how to read vividly, to en- envision themselves in the story. And that is so valuable because it absolutely helps their comprehension. If you're, and if you're all about test scores and getting your kids into the best college, so you can spend $240,000. Well, that's going to help them. <laughs> And it's going to really help them comprehend what they're reading so much more. And if you want your child to grow up to be a caring, contributing member of society, reading vividly and envisioning what the different characters are going through and what they're feeling, it's a great way to help your kid develop empathy and to understand that we look at the world through different experiences and through different sets of eyes. That's that's so so true. We we learn through what the characters are going through, and we also learn even if 
the character is similar to us, then we learn, we can identify that with that character and we can learn, you know, how we can also um, react in the same way that the characters have. But it's also fantastic to read books that are outside of what you think, you know, is, is your purview. You know, we read about different cultures. Um, my book isn't really a, a book about different cultures. It's, 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 it's kind of, um, you know, it's set on a beach and mm -hmm. we, you know, we don't really know. It doesn't deal with that kind of thing. There's, there's almost one character in the, in almost the entire book. Um, there's a few others, but not very many, but, but reading about different cultures and reading about different worlds that we don't know about that are outside of us. Not only do we learn about those cultures and those worlds and build an empathy for those, but we also can still identify with those characters. I mean, I've lived in different places, you know, all over the world. And at the very basic, at the very core, especially with kids, you look at kids around the world, they all do the same things. They all play in the same ways. You know, you take away the video games, you take away the, the toys and all kids, you know, that we smile in the same way. We laugh at the same things. You know, kids are, you know, you be, you make a funny face with a kid, no matter where you are in the world, that kid will laugh. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as we grow older, we start to separate because of, um, because of cultures, because we, you know, we don't understand. We have a lot of misunderstandings and, um, and, um, and a lot of bad as well. Mm -hmm. Don't want to take away from the fact that there is a lot of bad in the world as well on the grown up side. But uh, for the, for, for children's books, you know, around the world, ultimately deep down, I really believe that we, we are, um, we all want the same things. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so when we, when we're reading about books, um, for different cultures, and different races, um, even, you know, different languages, although translated, of, of course. But e even when we're reading about those things, we can still identify with those characters because those characters have fear. Those characters um, are, you know, they, they have wants, they have needs, they have desires. They're the same things that we, you know, the same things that we, we all have wants, needs, desires. They might be slightly different, but... Ultimately, you know, um, a, a, a child who, you know, grows up in India who just wants to be seen on the streets is, is um, a, a child in America who's in a family, a, a large family and just wants to be seen as well. They're in two very, very different places. But that child in America can still identify with that child um, in India and can learn from from them and then because of that because of that making that connection they build all of this empathy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's so important uh, absolutely and you know one of the things that's important is we've referenced your, your website we've referenced the art project but we haven't given folks the address so they can go and check it out so before we go any further just let <laughs> folks know what the address is so they can find out more about the Boy, the Boat, and the Beast, and all the wonderful resources you have online. Yes, so it's Samantha M. Clark, no E, dot com. And um, if you go onto the website and you click on, um, in, the, in the menu, um, you go to My Books, then there's a, once you get, get into the blog side of it, there's, there's a, a big, um, uh, drop down menu under my books that has the art therapy project. There's creative writing, um, tools. Um, I use a lot of different, um, creative writing techniques in this book. So I wrote up a, a, a guide and exercises for teaching the techniques that I used in this. Not all of the techniques, but a lot of the ones that I used. There's also chapter discussion guides. Um, a, a, a basic 10 question discussion guide as well. So there's a lot of information um, there a, about the book. And um, so it's all yeah on samanthamclark.com. And there's a bunch of giveaways and stuff. I'm always doing giveaways on there as well. Awesome. Well, <laughs> we absolutely want you to check out The Boy, The Boat, and The Beast. And check out samanthamclark.com. 
And stay tuned because I have a feeling Samantha is going to be back on the show with her spooky middle grade folks. And <laughs> we're, we're talking, we're, we're trying to set something up. Uh, with that now, uh, depending on when this airs, it might have already happened. So be, you'll be sitting there going, didn't, I, <laughs> didn't I experience that already? But anyway, but we're really excited. And and Samantha, so I know there's going to be an opportunity for you to come back on the show uh, again and maybe again and again and again because I had a blast speaking to you. So I Samantha, did too. This was so much fun. It that, really was. Awesome. Our guest today has been Samantha M. Clark. Check out her book, The Boy, The Boat, and The Beast. Thanks, Samantha. Thank you so much. I'll talk to you soon. Thanks. Please be sure to join us for the next edition of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. We have a wonderful guest. I had so much fun interviewing this guest. You know, a lot of the authors, they come on and they talk about, yes, I do school visits. And that might be, you know, a dozen a year, half a dozen a year. But our next guest, like me, spends so much time on the road interacting with kids, putting on school assembly programs. Her name is Michelle Nelson Schmidt. She is an author, but like I said, she is a a veteran school show assembly performer. And uh, we had such a great time talking um, talking about her wonderful book, Cordelia and the Whale, and also talking about the joys and some of the challenges of being a school show performer. That's the next edition of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. Hey, we would love to have you as a guest on the show. If you are an author of a great Jonas book, we would love to have you on. It's fun, it's easy, and it is absolutely free. Go to our website, readingwithyourkids.com. Click on the contact button. Let us know about your great book. We'll let you know how easy it is to be on the show. You know, being on the show, it gives you an opportunity to tell thousands of people about your great book, and it doesn't cost a thing. Check it out today at readingwithyourkids.com. Hey, I want to thank our guest today, Samantha M. Clark. Be sure to check out her book, The Boy, The Boat, and The Beast. And also check out Samantha and her other friends at spookymiddlegrade.com. Hey, I also I also really want to thank you. Thank you so much for, for joining us, for supporting the show. And thank you so very, very much for taking the time to read with your kids. I'll be looking for the next edition of the Reading With Your Kids podcast.